Welcome back to Collector Not Hoarder. This is Tom, and today we're gonna do some recent pickups of mine. Um, so some of this stuff isn't super recent. I haven't really done a pickups video in a little while, so I've collected a handful of things over the last uh, couple months or so. But uh, we're gonna go through some of that stuff. I didn't bring in everything to show. Uh, the video would get kind of long. I, I constantly buy things. I got a bit of a problem, but uh, I picked out some of the stuff I thought was uh, kind of interesting that I wanted to share with you. But um, the we'll start with the cards actually that I have in the background here. So obviously, if you watch my channel, you know I'm into uh, uh, 19th century baseball trade cards, and so the ones in the background here are from the H804-18. Uh, set and that is the Red Sox series so you can tell the the players on these cards are in Red Sox which is what gives them their name but these are very very difficult cards to find um, the few years I've been collecting them I've only seen I think two of these things sell online before there are four in this set I was able to acquire three of them and these three you can find my purchase on ebay it's on there but um what i did was I, I found a guy that was selling this set and they were actually professionally framed so when i bought the set from him you know i asked if he knew anything about them if he thought that they were legitimate copies or if he had them framed to know what the backs of them looked like and he said he didn't really know anything about them he bought them off a guy that was a collector for years and he assumed that they were original um but what was done with these cards is they were cut from an album and uh, uh, professionally framed, like I said. And so I wanted them out of the frame. So I took them from the frame, not knowing what the backs were going to look like. And uh, most of them look pretty much like this, like they had been pasted into albums. But there was actually a ton of paper that was on the backs of these. This is not paper loss. This is just like glue stains on here. Um, but I removed... Uh, the extra paper from the scrapbook that they came from that was on these. And uh, I'm going to submit them for grading. Um, I don't know how legitimate they are. They, they kind of feel unlike other trade cards that I have. And I've had several now for the last few years. And they have a different feel to them. And so uh, I'm going to let the grading company decide whether they feel they are real or not. I think they are. If they're not, then, you know, I'm out a little bit of money that I have into them. But I would also take away, you know, a, a learning experience from it. Because a lot of the stuff that I buy is kind of obscure and rare and doesn't have a lot of comps to it. So I can just add that into my toolbox as what to look for, you know, for these things. So um, I was happy to get them. I think they're really cool. They obviously have some condition issues to them, but um, they're definitely hard cards to get. And so that I have three of the four now, so crossing my fingers that they are real. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a big pickup for me to get those. Uh, next is another trade card. This is the 1886 McLaughlin Coffee trade card. Uh, another baseball one, baseball related. Um, I buy a lot of scrapbook albums, and I, I pull stuff from those albums that I want, and this was one of them. Uh, I was flicking through some pictures on eBay of a scrapbook and saw this was on one of the pages and, and had to have it. This is a super tough card to get as well, uh, and it's actually dated 1886 because it has a calendar for 1886 on the back. You can see there's a little, little paper loss. There's some writing on it here, whoever had it, but... This is just one of those cards that it doesn't matter the condition. I love it the way it is because it's so difficult to get. But uh, I'm also a big fan of uh, coffee trade cards. They seem to have some of the, the cooler uh, uh, depictions on them. So this one goes along with that. And oh, I guess th there was another one that came with that one that was in that same scrapbook. And it's not a... Uh, baseball related one but it looks like it's obviously part of the same set I just thought it was really cool so I'm going to keep these two together but it's got the same 1886 calendar on the back as well with some writing 
but neat to have together. Uh, like I just mentioned about the, the coffee trade cards, this one is one of my favorite that's a coffee trade card. This is uh, slightly bigger than most trade cards, but uh, this is for McLaughlin Coffee as well, and this is from a, a set that's referred to as uh, Children of Nations. So this one is the America one, and I believe it's the only one in the set that has a uh, baseball-related theme to it. And this is actually my second copy of this card. And it's not too bad of a copy. It's got some creases and obviously some staining to it. But uh, my other copy, I had PSA grade it. It is actually the only copy that PSA has ever graded. And I think SGC has only graded one copy of this card as well. So I think I'm going to send this one off to SGC and have one in a PSA and have one in SGC. But... These are tough cards and uh, probably one of my favorites out there. Next is uh, a jockey. This is an American Hall of Fame jockey. This is Todd Sloan. This is a 1900 Salmon and Gluckstein. Uh, this is a, a pretty tough card to get. He's one of two key cards in the set, I believe, but... Um, this was a great copy. I was super happy to find. I had been looking for this one for a while. I have a handful of Todd Sloan cards, in, including his rookie card that uh, is an 1898 rookie card. This is super hard to get. But um, this one, probably, you know, one of the, the coolest looking jockey cards that you can get from the turn of the century time. I love this card. But we will move on to... Let's see, what do I got? Oh, I got a few Beethoven cards. So uh, Eric at those back pages, uh, he's asked me before what happened to me picking up some Beethoven cards. And you know what, buddy? Here you go. I got a, a trio of them here, all from the same seller. And uh, each one tougher than the next to get, really. So this one out of these three, probably the most common. Uh, this is kind of your standard Ogden's. This is from uh, 1901, I believe. And it is a blank back card. But probably one of the most common Beethoven ones you'll see from the Ogden set. And then you have this Beethoven. Uh, this is from the uh, New Series 1 from Ogden's in 1902. And I believe that... This is a Pop 1, possibly, at PSA and SGC, so I believe they've each graded one copy of this card. It's not one you see very often. Uh, it does have some back damage to it, but the front is beautiful. So a very cool copy to have, since it's a tough one to find. I believe Eric does have a copy of this one. <clears throat> and the last one, probably the toughest one of the three to get, and it's this uh, 1905 Coosies. And uh, these Cousy's cards, uh, uh, Ryan Nolan at Breakout Cards collects these, and um, whenever I was picking up these other Beethoven cards, this dealer had this same card, and uh, this is one I've never actually seen before, but I believe SGC has graded one copy of this, and PSA's never graded a copy, so obviously it's a difficult one to pick up, but glad to add that one to the collection. Uh, next... I had found a dealer that was selling some Felix Poteen or Poten cards. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. <clears throat> I usually say Poteen, but it's probably not right. Um, these cards are 1908, and I have a, a Roosevelt, a Marie Curie, and a Major Taylor. So I actually got several other cards from this same dealer, and all of them were glued to the page that they came in in the album that these cards come from, and he had them listed for super low prices. So I just snagged them not knowing what they were going to look like on the back whenever I uh, uh, got the backs off of them. And this Marie Curie came out fantastic. Like, you can just see the corners on this thing. The black edge is like, obviously these cards chip really easy, but the back of this thing was 
darn near spotless. So I was really happy with that. And the major tailor, um, it came off pretty good. It does have uh, some slight glue marks and a little bit of paper loss there. But funny thing was, is whenever I took this one off, there that paper loss was already there. That paper loss didn't happen because of what I did. I, I feel like this was a re-glue. And I've, I've dealt with that before with some of these things I get from scrapbooks is where people get them out of albums and then they'll put them back in another album. So you'll see multiple glue areas on these things. I feel like that's what some of these spots were on this one. And then uh, the Roosevelt card, a little bit rough in shape around the edges, but overall really nice copy. Uh, happy to have that one as well. I love getting uh, anything that's kind of non-sports and obviously Major Taylor, uh, one of the key cards from this set. And there is a variation of this card. This is the easier of the two Major Taylor cards to get, but I actually have the, uh, the front-facing variation on its way here, so I don't have it in hand yet, but I'll have both Major Taylor cards from this set. Uh, next, I picked up a couple of 1908, um, I'm sorry, not 1908, 1910 Wills Aviation cards of the Wright Brothers. This is a pretty uh, common card, popular card for people to pick up. So I actually have three of them here, but this one out front is the most common. So these have back variations to them, and I'm a, I'm a sucker for back variations. And so this is the one that you usually see. This has the WD and HO Wills tag at the bottom there. Whereas these, oh, and actually this one would have been in uh, London is where this one was printed. And uh, let's see, yeah. And then these two are actually from Australia, but have two different backs to them. So this is a Vice Regal back and a Capstan back. So these are a little bit tougher to get. Um, I think the Vice Regal, to me, feels like a little bit tougher maybe. I'm not really sure. It took a little longer to find that one. But um, there is one more back to these, and it's a brand that's called Havelock. And I don't have a copy of that, but I am definitely on the hunt for one so I can have the, the four of them together. Um, next, I added to my... Uh, my T51, my 1910 T51 Myriad College series. So I'm going for collecting all the, the baseball related cards from this set. I was able to pick up an Antioch card and a Kentucky, Kentucky Wesleyan card. Um, so now I have six of the eight. I only need two more to go for that set, but these were actually really nice copies that I was able to get for a pretty good price. Um, this is a really cool set. If you're not familiar with it, it's got a ton of different sports and uh, outdoor activities that they include in this set. And obviously it's a college series, so what I went through and did is I, uh, I went through, and lucky for me, I, I actually went to a very small college, a small private college, and uh, they actually had a card in there. So this is from Marietta College out of Southeast Ohio. And it's actually right on the, uh, uh, the Ohio River and the Muskingum River down there. And so, uh, they got the guy with the canoe on here. So they do have a, a crew club at Marietta College. So maybe this is in reference to the crew club, but uh, it's on the river down there and there's a lot of boats down that way. So I loved having that one added to it. And then one more from that set. Uh, this is Heidelberg College. Uh, this is actually where my grandfather went to college. I found a card for his college. And uh, the grandfather that I'm talking about is the one that actually started me off with uh, my first set of baseball cards when I was seven. So I wanted to uh, incorporate him into my collection a little bit more. And so I found one for the college that he attended. And let's see, next is a French postcard. This is of uh, Louis Strang, and he's driving... Uh, the Thomas, I believe it's a Thomas Flyer, but this was for the 1908 Grand Prix in, uh, in France. And with this card, like I've been getting into the, uh, the T36 set, which is the auto driver set. And 
this is actually the, the Lewis Strang card from that set. And this is the same driver here. Um, but I went with this card because it had a couple different meanings. Obviously, it's got Lewis Strang in it, which goes with my T36 set, but also just the the name recognition there being the Thomas Carr. Uh, I like anything that I can find that's kind of my name related to it. And funny enough, about a year ago, I went through and I had picked up this Thomas Flyer. Uh, I forget what year this is from. I believe it's from the 50s. But um, it's the, the World on Wheels set, and I found a Thomas Flyer card in that. And so I had to get this along with it. thought it was a pretty cool pairing to have together. So I got, got a Lewis Strang card, the Thomas Flyer card, and then the pair together on the same postcard. So pretty neat. Uh, next, what do I have? Um, oh, we got this uh, 1908 Health and Strength, George Hackenschmidt. I'm a big fan of collecting some George Hackenschmidt stuff, so I try to find the uh, the postcards or, or any cards that I don't have in my collection. And this was one of them. Uh, this is from 1908, and it's actually a very clean postcard. Um, and I got this from a, a dealer over in the UK uh, named Cardhawk. That's what he goes by on eBay. He's got a lot of good stuff on there. So if you guys ever look for uh, some stuff over there, he's a good one to buy from. Great dealer. Next is, let's see. Oh, so I picked up another. This is uh, a 1915 SNA postcard of Charlie Chaplin, so very early postcard of Chaplin. I've owned several of these in the past. Uh, there is a set that goes with these. You can see it's got number one down here, and there are a total of five cards that go to this set. I'm still missing card number four, so I'm looking for that one, but anytime I find these, I pick them up and, and try to uh, get a better copy than what I had previously. And so I got this one. I don't know if it's gonna top the one that I already have, but uh, what was interesting is I was able to find this little gem. So this is something I had never seen before. And this is this is what's called a movie card. So you would go to the movie theater and you would collect these. And this is from a movie theater out of Dayton, Ohio, which makes it even more special to me since it's from Ohio. But it's got a lot of stuff going for it, being that it's early Chaplin, which is what I collect. Um, from Ohio, and it kind of matches this guy here. It's the same pose on both cards. But um, also with this card, there's a uh, there's a site called moviecard.com. Uh, it, uh, it shows examples of uh, cards from a lot of actors and actresses throughout the, uh, I don't know, mostly like early 1900s on up. And uh, I found a section for these cards on that website, but I didn't see this card in there. And so I messaged the guy that runs the site and sent him pictures of it and stuff. And he said they'd never seen it before. He's probably going to date it right around 1916, 1917. But uh, he said it was the first uh, example of this card he's ever seen. So obviously this could be a, a rare little gem that I found out there and happy to add this one. It does have some paper loss here in the corner, but... Man, if, if anybody knows anything about this one or has, has a copy or has seen a copy, like let me know because I'd like to know a little bit more about it because it seems to be uh, one of those cards that's difficult to kind of track down. And we're going to jump into some uh, modern baseball, actually. So one of the things I wanted to try to do this year was collect some of my guy from the 90s, which was Carlos Baerga, who's my favorite player back during the 90s. And whenever I started collecting some of his cards, I was noticing that he's in a lot of action photos. And obviously he was a pretty athletic guy whenever he was younger, uh, got a little older. I think he had some knee troubles and stuff. So he was out of baseball uh, after not a super long career, but he still had a pretty decent career. But I refer to these as the, the flying by Aragas. And I just went through and tried to find anything where it had, had him mid air. I prefer cards where he's uh, in Indian's uniform, but there were a couple of these where he was in the Mets. So later 90s when it was when he went to the Mets. Uh, he was with the Indians, I believe, until 96. 
but uh, just anything I could find. I thought these things were so awesome. Just all the action photos. Like, find me another guy that has this many action photos in the 90s where he's flying through the air. Um, this one is pretty interesting because this picture here was used for upper deck. And then Pinnacle did a side sketch or a side view of it. And so they used the same image. And then Donruss used the whole play on their card. So you can see it's starting him from when he's releasing the ball and he's starting to hop over the other player. And then the back is once he's landed. So obviously that was a big play for Bayerga that year. <laughs> At least all the card companies thought so. It was a great photo op for all of them. But good stuff. And then uh, Leaf doubled up, you know, they they had their uh, black gold, or actually gold, I'm not sure what you refer to those as, I forget, uh, a gold edition. And then just their standard edition. But they used something similar, another one of him jumping over a guy at second base. I mean, uh, I believe this one had Matt Williams, possibly. Looks like it's maybe for the Rockies. And... Another one of him flying through the air, and one more. Getting a little hop off before he uh, uh, threw off to first. It looks like he got Mo Vaughn there down in the bottom, too. So, great set of cards. I loved finding these, and they're so cheap. I think all those cards that I just showed you in that whole lot, I probably didn't pay much more than 20 or $25 total for everything that included shipping and tax. So, dirt cheap. When you like a player that isn't a Hall of Famer, you can get cards for uh, relatively nothing. Um, some other early ones that I got of him. So I picked up a graded copy. This is his 90s or 1990 Tops Traded Tiffany. This is in a PSA 9. So gorgeous copy, having it in a Tiffany. It is a 9. Looks really nice. Um, what else we got? Oh, the uh, Desert Shield copy, 1991 Desert Shield. This is in an 8. And then one of the bigger guys for uh, players in the 90s is getting their uh, 93 Finest Refractor. These things are just absolutely fantastic in person, getting the refractors. These are great, and I got this in a PSA 9. So, you know, all three of these graded cards that I got, Bayerga, and what I consider relatively high grade, I mean, you got two nines and an eight of some high-end cards from the 90s, and I don't think I have much more than $100 total into these three cards. So those were awesome pickups for Bayerga, and then I had one more for Bayerga. Uh, it's actually three cards, but of the same shot, and these are the 1996 Finest. And uh, if you guys don't know the High Pop Professor on YouTube here, go check out his channel. He talks about this set quite a bit and how rare some of these cards are that are from this set to actually pull the individual player. So you can check his channel for the numbers on these, but um, this is an atomic refractor of the Bowman's Best Preview. So this was an insert card. This is the atomic from the real set. These are not numbered, but they're very difficult to get. And then uh, just the refractor from the regular set. So you can tell on the back the number system here. So these are both number 86. If we can get to clear up, there we go. One says atomic refractor, one says refractor. And then on that other one that I had, more speckle kind of refractor. It's also an atomic refractor, but it's a BBP22, which is the Bowman's Best Preview. So this one's not as difficult to get as these other ones. So these are a little bit tougher, but beautiful cards once you have these things in hand. My goodness, the shine on these things is fantastic. And last but not least, I picked up a 1952 Larry Doby Redman with the tab. Uh, I saw this pop up and had to have it. I wanted to pick up Doby stuff this year. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a lifelong Tribe fan, and, you know, my goal was to uh, pick up some Doby and some Feller this year, and I haven't gotten too far into that just because I get so sidetracked with everything else, but this was one that I really wanted. You know, I, I do a lot of trade cards and a little bit of oversized stuff, and this kind of fit right into that, so 
I love this Dobie card and it was actually really nice condition and a good price for it. But that is actually all I have for you guys. We went a little bit long. Thanks for sticking with me for about 25 minutes here. Um, and I'll try to get more content out. It's just been difficult with time here recently, but uh, don't forget, there's a fine line between a collector and a hoarder. Which one are you?